Oh, folks, it's been a long time since I was studying computer science at university, almost as long as it's been since I was a computer science teacher. But believe it or not, back in the real world, before I became a content creator, I did do a lot of coding. And we're going to start using some in the Lego City. You can see I have got a little bit of a train shenanigans situation going on. And basically, we are going to be using software called Pybricks and a little color sensor that I've added to the bottom of my Lego City train to automate the trains in the city so they stop at the station, wait long enough for my minifigs to get on and off and then carry on around their day so I never have to touch the, uh, the train remote again. That's the plan. And as part of the plan, you may notice that I've actually put the loop back in that I removed before. So we now have our trains looping all the way around the lower level of the city, ignore the top level, ignore the beach and Thumbfair area. They're all a disaster currently. It's very much a work in progress. I've been pulling parts out of all these areas to get this bottom done. But my new plan for the bottom is we are gonna extend this platform all the way along, put a tunnel in just here, so you won't see it go and turn off around the corner. We are then gonna extend this bit out and bring it all the way along there and put a tunnel here. So again, you'll just see this train disappear into the tunnel. And I want the train to go around on a loop and stop in two places. Place number one I want it to stop is here at our makeshift train station. And the other place I want it to stop, and this one is risky, is underneath the platform so that it's not just constantly looping around, it's just kind of periodically coming out the tunnel, stopping at the station, then disappearing off into the tunnel again. Long term, I also plan to put a switch in here that then brings the track round the back of the beach as well. And there'll be another station here where the train will stop periodically and then come back and then go around the track in the opposite direction, still stopping at the station. We do actually have a train engine for both ends of that now. You can see we've got one on the back end of the train there and we've got this one that I've got on my little test track here. And then I also plan to have a, an additional track which is going to run along the back. My BrickLink Designer program big station is going to sit on the top here where the tumbler currently is. That's going down into a Batmobile display downstairs. Um, but it's going to come all the way around behind all the buildings on this level all the way up to the other end behind all the buildings. Then there's going to be occasional gaps between the buildings where you'll kind of see the train coming through, but it will just shuttle back and forth to stations at each end. And again, stop at the stations and keep shuttling back and forth. So to do all of that automation, we need to be able to automate our trains. And I am getting there because look at this cool thing that we can now do with the train. So using the PyBrick software, if I just hit play on there, you can see that we now have our train that just kind of shuttles back and forth, stops for a second, and then goes back again. So we can now control our train with code. And basically what's happening here, we've got the color sensor on the underside of the train that is looking for these two colored bricks. So it goes forward until it sees the yellow brick. When it sees the yellow brick, it stops, waits a second, and then goes back until it sees the blue brick, where it then stops, waits a second, and goes back in the other direction again. So we can just shuttle it backwards and forwards. The color sensor itself is just this little thing that plugs into the um, plugs into the the powered up controller unit thing. Um, this costs less than twenty pounds. You can get it straight off the Lego website, and I just have that positioned in the bottom of my train so that it sticks out the bottom like that. So when the middle bit of the train goes over the different colours, it sets that off in the program. I'll try not to shake the camera so much, um, so that when that bottom part passes over different colours, different things happen in the code. So it's less than twenty pounds for the sensor, and then the software Pybricks. Um, is at pybricks.com. I'll put a link to this down in the description below. I had to join their Patreon to get access to the code. There is a Lego way to do it, but it's not quite as powerful. Um, it's costing me about five pounds a month on their Patreon, or you can just buy a license to the software for 50 pounds, which I'll probably do eventually once we have this all singing or dancing. But basically what you do with the software is you add their firmware onto that unit. It then connects to the computer via Bluetooth, and I can send different programs to it to 
do what I want to happen. I'll put a link to the video for Bricks that I followed to set, set this up to show you what we're doing. But basically we have two programs that we're running. The first one is this measure program that once we've set the sensor up in the software, basically is just finding out the different colors. So if we run that software, you can see at the bottom of the screen, it's giving us a color code for the different colors that we might hover over. And you can see that as I move the train, the color code changes. So I used that data that was coming through from the camera on the bottom that's reading the colors to program in a color for the blue tile that's at this end, the yellow tile that's at this end, and also for the gray and the brown bits that are on the track below. Um, and all of this code here is setting those values within the software and then telling the center to only look for those values so that if there's something that's a bit like one of them, it goes to the closest match. We then start the engine and then we're just running a pretty simple loop over here. So we have a program that's just running constantly. Um, we can stop that other program now and start this one up and you can see it will just start shuttling back and forth again once this one starts to run. So it's all connected via the Bluetooth. We'll let that run in the background. Um, so the train, while true, so basically forever, it will run forward at 40% of its maximum speed until the color that the sensor is reading matches the color that we've preset for the yellow tile. So the yellow tile's at this end, so it'll run forward until it reads the yellow tile. At that point, the train stops, which is that line of code, waits for a second, 1000 milliseconds is a second, and then it will start running at the same speed in the opposite direction until the color that it reads is the color for the blue tile that's at the other end, and then it will stop, wait a second, and then the loop repeats, it goes back round and runs forward again. So if we stop that from running, we know that we can now control the train. The trick is now to get that train into the city and get it doing the things that we want it to do, in the city. And like I say, if you want a more detailed look at that code, I'll link to the video that I stole it all from down in the description below. It seemed part of me thought I could just take you through the code step by step, but I figured that's only going to interest a few of you and the information's all there online anyway, so go get it from the source. I'm just going to show you some of the cool things we can do with it. And with just a few tweaks to the code, we're able to do this. And this is this is starting to get cool now. Because at the moment, we have a train that's just parked up under there. You can see it's just started up. And now it is uh, heading around, getting to our station. And then it stops at the station and it's set to wait 10 seconds at the station. Obviously, we can adjust exactly where we want it to stop at the station. Uh, but it stops there, then starts up again heads off around under there, and then we've got another yellow block under there that causes it to just stop and wait under there. At the moment, we did experiment with red, but red, once you get underneath the cupboard, uh, underneath the raised platform, I've got some red base plates under there, I think, or some kind of red plate. And when I was trying to use red as the stop, it was stopping constantly as it was underneath there. It might even be to do with the lighting, but using yellow plates, it seems to have worked in both spots. So now what we're able to do we could have yellow here and a different color under there, and we could have one set to send it back in the opposite direction if we wanted to. And there's just all kinds of shenanigans we can now have because we can have our trains doing more than just running constantly, which is cool. So we've now got it set up to show an example of what a shuttle back and forth could be like. So this is what we would have running along the, uh, running along the back here eventually, going from end to end. So we've got a tile underneath here that makes the train stop when it's under there. We're only on a slight pause at the moment, then it comes back round and stops again at the station. So there's lots of things we can do. See, that's just cool. What I need now is some switch track so I can test switching it off into, uh, into different directions using the, uh, using the pie bricks as well. But I think that's probably for a slightly later stage once I've got the um, once I've got the beach area up and running, because at the moment the beach area is not really much happening. That's probably going to be the next update. But I am really, really happy that we've now got this train back on a loop. I don't know why I took it off a loop. I do know why, but it, it's staying on the loop. I think it's better on the loop and having some control so it's actually stopping at the station. 
it's just awesome. I love having it stop at the station like that. I'll obviously play around with some of the delays. What I might have is a much longer delay underneath the raised platform. Maybe the five to 10 second delay at the station here is fine, but we could have it delay for like one or two minutes under there. And that would be awesome because then it just feels like the train is disappearing off somewhere else. And then every now and again, a train comes around to the station. We could hear it coming. You hear it pick up from underneath. You hear it come around. It stops at the station. People get on and off and then it disappears off again. We stop being able to hear it. And then a few minutes later, it comes back again. Things like that amuse me. Now, by all means, if you want me to go fully in depth and do a, tu do a tutorial on the code itself, let me know. Like I say, I deliberately didn't for this one because the content is already out there and it didn't feel like a video that I needed to make. But if you wanna see me do that, let me know and I can do that in a future video. But for now, I'm just gonna continue playing around with all of the different possibilities that I've now got with a train that I can control with Python. Let me know down in the comments if you've got any ideas for cool things that I can do. I do need to get some more track. Just throwing that on the floor, but you can see I'm starting to collect up some straight tracks so I can do the top level as well. And then we do have plans starting to come together for the rest of the city. You can see we've got a loose line of sea, beach, and buildings on here. I'm not quite sure where I'm gonna put the lighthouse or the modern beach house that we've done. These bits, kind of don't really have a home at the moment either. But like I say, we're gonna have a train station here, track running all along the back. The Marvel modulars will all move forward. We're not gonna have road on the top level because everything's gonna move forward half a base plate and we're just gonna have like a pedestrian area. And uh, yeah, it's, it's all starting to come together. Goodness me, do I love how this train works now. But if you have enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for loads more Lego content. Keep the ideas coming for everything to do with the city as well. I'm reading all the comments and those of you who made suggestions in the past will probably have seen quite a few of them end up in the city at various points. This was certainly one of them. And thank you very much for watching.